In this video, I'm going to show you two techniques for adjusting facial features in Photoshop. The first technique will only be applicable to the newer versions of Photoshop. We're gonna use artificial intelligence for that. But with the second technique, you could follow along if you're using an older version of Photoshop since we're gonna be using older tools. All right, why don't we jump right into the tutorial. This is the image that I'm going to work with. You can use whatever image that you like. By the way, this is the same photo that I used on my Joyner Lucas hands over the face double exposure effect. If you haven't seen that tutorial, I'll place a link down below in the description. I think you'll really enjoy it. But anyway, this is the image that we're working with. And I'm just gonna simply start out by right clicking on the layer and converting it into a smart object because we want to work non-destructive. A smart object is a container that can hold one or more layers and it allows it to apply adjustments, distortions, filters, and transformations non-destructively, which means you can always come back and make changes. So with this layer now converted into a smart object, I'm gonna go into filter, liquify. The liquify filter will immediately know that there is a face on the image and you'll be able to see these on-screen overlays. Notice that the face tool is active by default. And what these on-screen overlays allow me to do is adjust the face. So notice that when I hover over one of these handles, I get a tooltip that tells me what it does. I also have a corresponding slider here on the right hand side. If the image has more than one face, I will be able to select the different faces from this drop down. I usually prefer just clicking and dragging on the handles to adjust the image. So just simply hover over the handle and click and drag to make an adjustment. Any adjustment that you make to the face, you always want to keep subtle. You never want to push things into the extreme. However, in this tutorial, just so that I can show you how the tool works, I am gonna stretch it further than I normally would. But again, keep things very subtle when you're making these adjustments. And like I said, all you have to do is hover over the image and click and drag to make your adjustments. Very, very simple. And you can use the corresponding sliders to make an adjustment. If you want to see the original image, you can click on the preview and click on the preview checkbox again to bring it back. You can also press on the P key on the keyboard to enable or disable that preview checkbox. In this case, I'm just gonna press cancel because I don't really want to make an adjustment. I want to apply a different distortion now with tools available in older versions of Photoshop. So what I'm gonna do now is select the lasso tool and think of an area that I need to adjust. For example, if I wanted to give myself a smile, I could definitely do so simply by clicking and dragging over the face, try to get more than what you need. Then with the layer selected, you can press Control J on Windows, Command J on the Mac to duplicate the pixels inside of that selection. I'm also going to right click and convert it to a smart object. And I'm gonna show you one technique. We can go into Edit, Puppet Warp, by default, you should see a mesh. I don't like using the mesh, so I just disable it. You can disable it just by clicking on this checkbox in the options bar. But anyway, you can now click over the image to create pins, like so. Then you can click on a pin and drag it anywhere that you want. And I can do the same thing on the other side. Also, if you hold Alt on Windows, Option on a Mac, you're gonna get a circular overlay and you can click and drag to rotate that pin accordingly. So I'm rotating it by holding Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and clicking and dragging on the circular overlay. When you're done, you can click on the check mark to commit the changes, and you can see the before and the after. I think I might have pushed this left pin a little too much, but luckily, we're working with a smart object, so I can always double click on the label, bring the pins back, and just tune it down a little bit so that the pixels are not so stretched out and click on the check mark to commit those changes. And also, if you wanna learn more about the Puppet Warp tool, make sure that you check out the link below in the description. I have a crash course on it where I teach you everything you need to know about this tool, all the settings and different options so that you can master the tool and take your photo manipulations to the next level. Again, link below in the description. Now what I can do is hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and click on the layer mask icon to make a black layer mask, which means that you will hide everything on screen and you can now paint with white on that layer mask to selectively bring pixels back. So I'm going to select the brush tool, make sure that white is my foreground color, and I'm just gonna paint with white to bring back the pixels that I want, not the entire layer. So just the smile before and after. And doing these type of distortions require a lot of fine tuning and remember, 
keep your adjustments subtle. I know that in this case, I might have stretched pixels a little too much. I was a little heavy handed, but I wanted to show you how the techniques work. What you're trying to do in your portraits is just adjust those little minor imperfections. Also, don't forget to check out my tutorial on the Puppet Warp tool. I'll place a link to it below in the description and also a link in the description to the hands over face double exposure effect. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you again in the next Photoshop tutorial.